frankly speaking, it had to be said. Hey, yo, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Corey J. It's time for another episode of To Be Frank Frank, the podcast. Say what you got to say the first time, not the next time. I'm super excited for today's broadcast because I have one of my fam on the show today, my cousin. She's my favorite meteorologist. Yeah, you heard it first. She's my favorite meteorologist. Y'all don't hate. Weather Channel, I'm watching you because I'm I'm looking for her to be on your screen this year, not next year, this year. Yeah, I'm manifesting it. So I'm always calling her Kuzan because she always got my back. We've been fam literally for over 10 years. But enough is enough about me. Let me bring my fam right on. Everybody say hello to Jenna Adams. What's up, fam? How we doing? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And happy Friday happy to you. Happy Friday. Yes. Friday. So this is going to be fun. We're going to try to do this without laughing our behinds off because you know we are yes. always laughing a lot. So first And thing, if we're not laughing, we're dancing somewhere. So there's that. <laughs> hey, you, can't go that you know, is the joy of the Lord everywhere we go. So first things first, today's... uh topic is family matters and mm -hmm. we're just gonna have an open dialogue that's gonna be wonderful so first things first fam i want you to introduce yourself let everybody know a little bit about you before we get into today's topic all right well of course my name is Jana adams i am originally from gonzalez louisiana i'm very family oriented because very i great. grew up with nothing but family <laughs> and um, i spent a lot of time with my elders so i always joke but i'm serious when i say that i am a young person but i have an old soul which i really do and uh, i learned a lot from them and i've manifested in everything that they've taught me just going through life and through the hard seasons and even in the great seasons and i just love being around family uh, weather is truly my passion and that's been my passion since childhood anybody that knows me knows that that has been the thing that is like the it thing ever since I was two, three years old. So um, I've never, ever given up on that. And, um, you know, I also love music and I'm a big sports fan as well. So that's pretty much it. And I'm very involved in my church community. So I love to give back. And I've actually been in community service since I was a kid as well. And once I aged out of church programs in my childhood at my home church. And that was when I was like, okay, it's actually cool to be able to give back. And so I help tutor kids as well. Now don't ask me to do it now because <laughs> this new curriculum is something else. So, uh, so I would, you know, I tutor and I'd also do a little bit of community service. And then of course, in recent years, I've helped out with um, some of the, assistance with the hurt after the hurricane and you know doing the relief efforts with that as well awesome so so fam first things first tell us why weather you love weather <laughs> you love weather of all things why i know weather? i know it's such a it's a funny thing because i swear for every time i get asked that question i wish i had a dollar because that is like the most common question i get um you know, as a kid, a lot of us were asked, you know, what we wanted to be when we grow up. And people would say, you know, a firefighter or I want to be a soldier in the military or something like that or a doctor, nurse. And I would get bullied so much because I'd be like, you know, I want to be a meteorologist. They're like, what is that? Do you study meteors? But, you know, honestly, the reason why I got started is um, I actually started to learn to read early. Okay. So I spent, and as I said earlier, I spent a lot of time with my elders. So my family, literally, we all lived on the same street and my grandparents lived next to my aunt and uncle. So if I wasn't at one house, I was across the yard at the other ones. Mm -hmm. And we, at the time we still get newspapers. So when I was at my aunt and uncle's as a kid, I was just trying to flip through to find the comics, but then I came across the weather section in the newspaper. And so I was like, okay, this is interesting. You know, and I'm asking questions like, what does all this mean? And so my aunt, God rest her soul, 
would help me to interpret what was going on with the maps and help me to understand what was expected in the forecast for that day. So anytime I was at her house, then we would go over that and then she would tell me or ask me to tell her, what does this say about what the weather would be on Friday or something like that. Mm -hmm. And from there, it just, it took off. And then when I was six, I went through Hurricane Andrew, which was nuts. And uh, that was like the first hurricane that I'd ever gone through. Mm -hmm. And I just remembered hearing the sounds outside and everything. And there was five of us in the house at the time. And so after that, it just really started to pique my interest. So anytime we had library days at school, I would try to find as many books as I can and just try to fill my brain. And it just kept growing from there. So between that time and then by the time I was in fourth grade, I discovered the Weather Channel and they had documentaries and things. And so I was just filling my head with all this stuff and it just took off from there. And so I never looked back from there. Come on. That is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> so, so with that being said, tell us who is your favorite meteorologist to tune into? Either past or present. Either one is fine. Past or present. That's hard because there's so many. <laughs> there's so there's so many. I kid you not. But if I really had to choose, if I had to choose one, I would probably say Jim Cantori because of the fact that I've been watching him the longest. Yeah. And you know, he puts himself in the middle of everything. And then I love the way that when he does narrations like for storm stories. Yeah. The way that he tells the story is also amazing. And like, he's the face of the Weather Channel. He's been there coming up to 37 years. So wow. I would definitely have to say he's like at the top of the list. Gotcha. So I definitely want to commend you first off for having the passion that you have because it shows. Though yeah, thanks. On, the, on the flip side of that, we understand that there aren't that many female meteorologists. What are your Correct. thoughts about women pursuing careers that are normally not the norm? I think, honestly, there's a lot of us out there, but I think because it's always overshadowed because of the public's perception that it's a man's job. Right, right. It kind of gets thrown under the bus. Okay. If that makes sense. Right. And then also, it depends on your geographic location as well, because... As you can see down here, there ain't a lot of us doing <laughs> this job as well. So you got to factor that in too. Yeah. But a lot of people think that certain jobs are only for certain genders. And we have to kind of get away from those stereotypes because there's a lot of great women. Like another one of my favorites is, uh, is Stephanie Abrams. And mm -hmm. she's born and raised in Florida. And she's, she's amazing on the Weather Channel. She actually just celebrated 20 years of being there, which is nuts. And, uh, you know, just the way that she breaks down how the atmosphere works is what I really appreciate about her because I've learned a lot from her in doing that when I explain how things work to people. Okay. And then it's like, it makes sense because when people see it, it's like, oh, I remember what she told me. And then they can just pass it down to somebody else mm -hmm. and people start catching on. Right. So... I think if we can eventually just move away from, you know, the stereotypes, we could probably get more people in there because I think it's less than 10% mm -hmm. of females that actually work in the field. We, we definitely got to get more representation. I love to hear that. And the reason why I ask that is because inclusivity is very important. No matter what field you're in, you know, folks tend to overlook, you know, being inclusive, you know, yeah. and it's it's important. It's necessary. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we tend to just focus on diversity or equity, but inclusivity is just as important as the other two. So I want you to just visit for a moment where, and one of the things that I value is that you are so connected with your family. Tell me something that demonstrates the inclusivity within your family. Like y'all welcome everybody in. I mean, like, that's how I got in, and I literally been attached to the <laughs> hill. You know what I'm saying? Though, where has the just give me where does this inclusivity comes from dealing with your family? I think 
I would have to say it started with our elders because they always preached us the importance of having family Mm -hmm. and, you know, just spending time together because we always try to spend holidays together. And then even when our family would move out of state, they come home and visit. And like my cousin, Ashley, when she was living in Kansas, Mm -hmm. she would come down over the summer as a kid. So we spent a lot of summers together growing up and, you know, she's more like, a, a bigger sister to me mm-hmm. than my cousin so we have a term like we're cuss sisters so it's like we're cousins and we're sisters mm-hmm. but it was like they always wanted to make sure that if we didn't have anybody else that family we could always turn to so that started with like my grandfather and my aunts and uncles and you know just all of those that went before us and then Uh, Before all of them began to pass away, like they wanted to make sure we had family reunions so that way we stayed in touch and we stayed connected. And so I think with with that element, that's how we were able to just invite people in. And then we were heavily involved in church, too. So a lot of times because we all went to church together, it just kind of poured over into that. So when you combine the two and then, of course, you can see the character in good people. It's easy to just kind of invest in right. those that have a good character and you know good attitude and are taking that faith walk with you no matter what they're going through. And it's like, hey, you part of the family too. So yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. So 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 Jana, I want to take a moment and and help those that's watching right now. Someone that's been dealing with not feeling included like what advice do you have for them to help them break that barrier like they may be in a very toxic environment where they've been feeling like the eyeball for so long you know what i'm saying and Mm -hmm. they know what to do to make the environment a healthier environment but they're looking for other avenues outside of that environment to help them feel included So let's see, I would say stay the course first and foremost. If you are a person that has, you know, some type of faith or, or positivity, you know, make sure you hold on to that and try not to veer away from that. And also try to confide in someone Mm -hmm. like, I'll use myself for an example. Like I know that I really wasn't the person that was always included. And I'll say that, you know, like at school and stuff like that, because yeah. I got bullied a lot. And the sad part is it was always the people that looked like me that <laughs> picked on me. And I'm like, I don't understand why that happened, yeah. you know, because And I'm guessing it was just because of my upbringing, because, you know, my mom worked in the school system Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, she was always very, very, very much on us about education because she wanted us to succeed. And I I had a hard time because of how I spoke, because of the fact that I was intelligent and, you know, just the things that I was interested in. And of course, like you said earlier, weather was one of those unusual things to be interested in. But you can't let being different deter you. So even if it seems to be like a bad thing for somebody else, you can't think of it as a bad thing because everybody has a different path in life. Right. Sometimes you have to be called to be more of a leader in some aspects than being a follower with the in crowd. Because if you follow certain people, they can take you in a totally wrong direction and then you can make all sorts of wrong choices and then you might end up being a statistic if you you know if you keep going the way that you're going right so the best thing you can do is stay the course find those people that's going to guide you and lead you in the right direction and you know and if you're not actively involved in like a a church community or anything I would even say seek counseling or or some sort of therapy because I know in our community, it gets frowned upon Mm -hmm. 
but it is one of the best things that could have ever happened to me Come on, to, you know, to have a therapist and it is okay. If you need help, like that statement says, it's okay to not be okay. That is so true. Is true. And I would definitely invest in that. That, that is worth the investment. If you know, something is off and you need help trying to fix those pieces and put them back together again, so you can be right. Why not? Come on. And I'm glad you mentioned it because people really don't want to stay the course. They just want to just, you know, cut the course short and they're like, okay, whatever. You know, it didn't work out, you know, and you didn't even take the time to evaluate or analyze, you know, what was going on. So, right. so let's navigate even further. Tell us about who is your biggest influence right now within your family. Like if you had to just pick one, I know it's a lot, but if you had to just Ooh. pick one. <laughs> I know, I know, but just one right now. I know one, one one right and now. And I don't want you to get beat up for your answer. So Ooh, just, let her, I'm just telling her to just pick one. I know it's a lot, but I'm just getting her to pick one. Just pick one. So Oh we <laughs> So one, okay. Now my question on that one, does sure. they have to still be here or not? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. So Oh gosh. Okay. So, um, so honestly, my, my biggest influence is, uh, is my aunt, my aunt Doris that passed away. Okay. And I not only say that because she was the catalyst behind me getting started with the weather stuff, but mm -hmm. just because of who she was as a person, like, you know, that saying where people say that there's angels that walk among the earth. Yeah. Like she was truly one of those people. And you know, she was always just so kind and, you know, she was like a second mom to us. Yeah. And she was just like the most godly person and she always had the best advice to give. And it's like, if nobody else understood what you were going through mm -hmm. and you couldn't really talk to nobody else about it, she was like that person you could confide in with that. And you didn't have to feel like you were being judged or anything like that. So that like i miss her dearly but that's just the kind of person that she was like yeah. she's just amazing and she's a great singer too so okay. <laughs> okay. so she, she was just awesome just all the way around and so you know and i and just in my career path that's one of the biggest reasons i just i keep going every day because i'm like she would probably come back and haunt me if i don't get the <laughs> job <done." So laughs> And based on how you described her, it tells us that you're living out her legacy. You know what I'm saying? She's mm -hmm. looking over you. You're living out her legacy. And legacy is very important. So tell oh, yeah. us, so tell us, Cousin, you know, who is a role model for you presently when it comes down to your career field or just life in general? Who is someone that is constantly giving you that push right now for you to be Jana? Man, let's see. So family-wise, famous? Uh, just in general. I, just in man. general. <laughs> I know. I, look, that's how we do on this broadcast. We put I was like, these, are, these are some good questions. <laughs> these are good questions. But it's like, it. there's just so much. It's just hard to pick one. I know. Um, <laughs> so um, on, the fam on the family side, I'd probably say... I would say my mom, my mom and my sister for sure. Yeah. Because they are both strong women and they had to do a lot, you know, with, uh, you know, being single parents and, and raising kids and everything and, yeah. and still dealing with their own issues. Right. And being a success story. Like, you know, I'm being able to work in the school system almost 40 years and being able to retire fairly comfortably and, yeah. and enjoy life. And then my sister raising two men who don't get in trouble and one's getting ready to finish college next year. So it's great. And then she's moved up in the corporate world as well. And, yeah. you know, and then she still does her public service or, you know, church service and stuff. And it's just, you know, it's amazing just to have those role models yeah. in my life too. And then of course, being that we all stuck together through most of life anyway. So even with the disagreements and and different ideas and different personalities, at the end of the day, it's all love. Yeah, you know. I love so, to hear it. You know. I love to hear it. So, tell us a fun <laughs> fact about meteorology. What what is something about weather that 
most folks don't know that would be intriguing for them to know. Let's see. A fun fact. All right. Well, I tell you what. I went back in May. I went and I had a very awesome visit with the uh, Hurricane Hunters in New Orleans. Okay. And this was actually a fun fact for me, too, because I didn't know this. So there's actually two different planes that they fly when they have to go out and observe the tropical disturbances that end up becoming tropical storms and maybe hurricanes if the conditions are favorable. Yeah. But one of them only flies just through the, the hurricanes. And that's the ones where the, they're mostly military based personnel that's on there. And the crew is about five people. Okay. And then, of course, the uh, the NOAA plane, which is like the National Oceanic Atmospheric plane, they also fly through hurricanes, but they also fly through thunderstorms and winter storms, and they collect their data through that, too. Okay. So you got two different planes that's collecting information, but only one is specific to just the hurricanes. Mm. So I thought that was pretty cool. And their that crew is was, cool. like super small. And um, a lot of people are like, well, how in the world did you get to go? Like, did you have special access? I was like, when you check your information every day and you find out these things, it's free. And I missed them the last couple of times they came. Yeah. So I, I want to take advantage of that opportunity and, you know, network with people and just go out there and just get it done and just go see it. Like I didn't even bother to take a whole bunch of pictures and stuff like a bunch of other people did because I just wanted to be in <laughs> the moment. So fascinated. I mean, right? I was like, was I just want to pick them. up what I can pick up and mm -hmm. you know, and just meet people and you know, just share my story and everything. Yeah. And of course, like the big story was my shirt because I had some random hurricane, which I still don't know what hurricane it was. <laughs> and it was on my shirt. It was a shirt I found on Amazon and everybody was like, I love your shirt. And I was just like, Thank. and you know, I didn't know what hurricane that shirts. was because there was no state lines, no nothing. Like yeah. it's just in the middle of the shirt. So apparently it got to like some of the other people that worked at the National Weather Service and they were like, I couldn't believe it until I saw this shirt and here you are. And I'm like, <laughs> here's the shirt. <laughs> okay, okay. And you know we love our shirts. You know we love yes. our shirts. That's one thing. Yes. <laughs> Jana and I, we love our graphic tees, y'all. We do. Oh, you can't Absolutely. Get us I feel like they're a representation of yourself. Yes. And I, because I'm a person like Kudos to those that have tattoos and everything, because I know some people who get tattoos and they represent something or right. part of them. I'd rather just throw on a shirt or I might have like a bracelet or something that'll represent me. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. that, that is a big vibe. So, so Kuzan, before we wrap up today's episode, I want to ask one more question. So, when it comes down to Louisiana as a whole, we know that most of the times people are always just like, when you say, oh, I'm I'm from Louisiana. Oh, you from New Orleans? And it's always <laughs> just New Orleans. There's no there's no other city that they, I know. They, they, they they just automatically think you're from New Orleans. And yeah. to have you on the broadcast representing the big G, Gonzalez, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Folks that's watching them may be like, what? What's Gonzalez? Who? <laughs> you know, like, what? <laughs> what is that? So I just... For a moment, I just want you to give props not only to your city, but educate the folks just a little bit on the culture of Gonzales and why you love Gonzales. And they have to understand great people come from Gonzales. And yes, yes, yeah, shout out to my hometown Gonzales. And it's so funny that you mentioned that because <laughs> when I like when I would work. I used to work at the mall when I was in college and everything, yeah. and people would argue me down that, first of all, that I wasn't even from here because I don't sound like it. <laughs> and that was the biggest argument. And I had to tell a customer one time, I was like, look, I live behind here. I can yeah. go and grab my birth certificate for you yeah. from my house if you yeah. want, like whatever you want me to do. But I often get questioned about being from here because I don't sound like it. But... um. Growing up in Gonzales, it was very small. It was very rural for the most part. But then the mall came up and it started becoming more, more and more like a city, well, a bigger city. 
And we still have some of the best jambalaya in the world. We are the jambalaya capital. Come on, and I love me some jambalaya. We are in between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. So if you are traveling in between the two, that is the midpoint. And people usually stop there. They'll get the jambalaya or they'll go shop at the mall. And, um, you know, we we had pretty much a melting pot growing up. And that's what I like because... My parents, they had to go through the whole segregation and the desegregation thing, which be, for me, I just thought it was just crazy for people to go through that anyway because of how diverse it was for both my sister and I growing up because we had friends from all sorts of backgrounds and everything. And I was just like, I can't believe that people were like that back then. But we had that melting pot growing up and everybody got along just fine like my graduating class if we run into each other in walmart or something we still wave and like it like we see each other all the time so right. it's a, a nice little community for the most part but there are some areas that you need to stay away from for sure but <laughs> like, you know, every overall, area, like every it's area. A, you know it's a great it's a great town and a lot of people are still moving there and it is steadily growing so um it's great, and I'm I'm glad to be a product from there, and I will represent it all day. So. Come on, holding it down, for the, <laughs> holding it down for the big G. Well, Jana, yeah. on behalf of the To Be Frank Frank fam, we can't thank you enough for being featured on our podcast. Yes, thank you for having me. So, before we wrap up, how can people keep in touch with you? I'm sure it's a lot of those that want to keep in touch with you, follow you, ask you questions. I mean, they got to get to know you now because once you're on the <laughs> channel, I'm just saying, y'all heard me with the channel. I know you, Jim, holla at your boy. Like, right? meet my cousin before December 31st, 2023. I need her on that screen. I'm not playing. Right, I'm right. not playing. We got to make it do what it do. So <laughs> how can they keep in touch with you? All righty. Well, my Twitter handle is at JL Adams WX, which normally I'm pretty active there. And I will talk with you about weather and sports. And I do post some music stuff and some positivity things there. So it's a bit of a mix and pot, but nine times out of 10, I'm going to be talking some weather stuff there. <laughs> and also on um, Facebook, I can be found at Jana Adams Future Meteorologist. And I'm also on LinkedIn at Jana Adams. So you can find me there as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, you, there you have it, folks. The next meteorologist on the Weather Channel, <laughs> yeah. Jana Adams, everywhere. Or Weather Nation, somebody. <laughs> That's it, everywhere. Look, all the channels. Every right. channel. All the channels. So, and if you got graphic tees, you need to contact her too so she can support. Yes, and look, I have some friends. If you like weather stuff too, like Uh, if you're a geek or you know some weather geeks, I have some friends over at Helicity Designs that make some great stuff. Come on. I can get you their their websites as well because they love to have the new people and they love me advertising for them. So, hey, let me know. Come on, we're holding (laughs) it down. We're holding it down. So there you have it, folks. This is a wrap for Family Matters. Another episode of To Be Frank. Frank, frankly speaking, it had to be said. I'm Corey J, and we're out. Peace. Oh.